being here at the Young Architects Conference has been really different and exciting in the sense that it's more intimate and I, I feel like I know everyone who's attending the conference. It's a great city, it's got a great energy and so does the YAC conference. We're excited to see lots of other young architects. This is it in every way I could ever imagine. We got great venues, it's a great city, it's a great neighborhood. It's really cool and inspiring, especially just the workshops that we had yesterday and hearing what other people want to do with their lives. I'm building meaningful relationships, a lot of really excited young people. I'm getting excited about what I'm doing. This is what we were looking for in a conference. Welcome to the Young Architect Conference! We did it. We did it. This is the first architecture conference for the community, by the community. Make some noise if you were here yesterday. Yeah! Make some noise if you just showed up today. Real quick introduction. This is my dog, Molly. She's, uh, she, she, hey, Molls, over here. Molls. This is everyone. Yeah. She likes to just kind of push her way through. She's been to more Young Architect lectures than any human has ever been to. Uh, and she's just gonna be hanging out all weekend. I want to talk a little bit about how we got here too, kind of the history of the Young Architect Conference. In 2018, I went to the AIA Conference in New York City, and I actually dragged my boss, Joanna, with me, who had, <laughs> who had only been working for me for a couple of months at the time. And so, was anyone else at this conference? Raise your hands, yeah, there you are, okay. So we showed up in New York, and it was basically 30,000 people of chaos. It was insane. I've been to a lot of architecture conferences. I go every year to the AIA conference in New York, and I missed every single keynote. Something happened, but the way they set it up, only about a quarter of the people who were attending the conference actually got to see the keynotes. And so I had no idea what the hell happened, what was going on with the conference. The product showroom was insane. It was off the hook. They got the Jacob Javits Center and everyone that sold windows and doors and hardware like went all out. And it was really like, it was off the hook. It was nuts. And very sadly, there was very little programming for the young people in the profession. No one was talking about the next generation of architects. And before the conference happened, I said to Joe Anna, I said, you know, every year they have this party at the end and it's like $70 and they give you two drink tickets and there's always some performer or whatever and it's always loud, super loud. I said, you know what, instead of going to their party, I want to just have my own party. So we rented this, I found this, we found this little pub, this little Irish pub, and I said, yeah, we're gonna have a party for like 70, maybe 100, 120 people. I'm just gonna invite all my friends. And I put up a little Eventbrite, and DJ Questlove was supposed to play the AIA party. And so everyone's like, oh cool, Mike's gonna have another party at the same time, maybe I'll go to both. And then at the last minute, DJ Questlove got canceled, or he was never really booked in the first place. And uh. they swapped him out from, with uh, En Vogue from 1992. I don't know if you guys <laughs> ever heard of them. And then all of a sudden, my little Eventbrite went off the freaking hook, and <laughs> 700 people signed up for my Young Architect party. And there was a line around the block in the rain, and everyone was like, Mike, this is awesome. There's Joanna <laughs> wondering what the hell did she sign up for. And at, the, at this party, I kept telling everyone, I said, I said, you think this is great? I'm just going to have my own architecture conference. Next year, we're gonna have a, you're going to have a young architect conference. And after it was over, I was talking to my friends, Drew, Rachel, and Anne, and I said to them, just imagine. Imagine if there was an architecture conference that had keynote speakers who were successful young people doing amazing shit. And imagine if there was an architecture conference that was actually focused on the architecture community, not the construction products salespeople. I feel like so much energy goes into entertaining the window salesman that very little, you know, goes into actually focusing on the architecture conference. I always say too, you know, it's, I feel like sometimes it's turned into product rep conferences disguised as architecture conferences so they could sell their products to architects. And imagine if there was an architecture conference focused on the next generation of architects. Imagine if there was an architecture conference focused around having fun. I'm so sick of architecture conferences that completely disregard the next generation of architects. I should just throw my own young architect conference and just do whatever I want. 
Then all three of them looked at me just like this. <laughs> and they said, you need to do this. You need to do this. So that was June of 2018. And pretty much since that time, I have been hustling, traveling the country with my dog in that van outside talking to people about the Young Architect Conference. See, growing up as a kid in South Africa, my mom used to shout from her room and say, Wanda, Wanda, was the Sotandas? So in other words, we're saying, Wandile, come, let us pray. And then we would, I would come over just from the other room and she would say something like, God, help us have a dignified place to call home. See, children around the world love to play house. And growing up in an apartheid-shaped shantytown in Durban, South Africa, my friends and I were no different. Well, you know, except our houses were a little too small to play house in. So we had to be innovative and learn from our parents and build our little playhouses right next to our family's shacks. And you see, in my community, there was no architect because Everyone was an architect. As you can tell, when I was a kid, I was a little lighter skinned. Um, so whenever a new member came into the community, what would happen is the whole community would come together and they'll bring all the materials that they had and they'll help them build a home. So learning from our parents, me and my friends, we were fueled by mischief, and creativity would run around and scavenge for scrap metals and leftover materials and like put this together and build our own little shack right next to our family's shack. And this would fall on us and then we'll try again and we'll build a stronger structure that eventually was able to hold weight. And then we'll run to our respective homes, one would still rice and other beans and other spices and then would come and cook it in our little playhouse. You know, it was these early experiences that really taught us how the importance of working together, the importance of failing together, the importance of having fun together, and most importantly, the excitement of living in a house that we had built and eating food that we had made out of stolen ingredients from our families. <laughs> and we didn't have the most trending toys. And although sometimes painful, these experiences made my childhood and made the childhood of all the kids in my community. My question for you is, how are you going to use your pain to unlock your passion? How are you going to use your unique experiences to drive about change that only you can bring to the world? Wanda, Wanda, what's this Tandas? My mom used to say as she called me for prayer. Mom, I am now the answer to your prayer for others. There is a different vibe here. I think it's kind of more casual than some of the other conferences I've been to, which I really like. Uh, Mike's opening speech was great. Um, uh, you know, he was talking about entrepreneurship and kind of valuing your work, and I just think that was a really good way to start off the conference. Everyone here, uh, you can see there's passion in them, and that's Very just that's contagious, you know. Yeah. So um, it was really uh, great to speak to a lot of other people, um, even meeting uh, people from the East Coast or from the West Coast, you know, from, from all over. It's really nice. A couple months ago, when Michael and Joanna reached out to me, to come speak at the first ever Young Architect Conference. I said, Michael, I know I look young, but I'm definitely not an architect. So are you cool with me coming? He's like, yeah, Ash, I got you. We believe that you can show our community and our audience how to stand out in a busy marketplace. That's what we're gonna do today. That's what I'm here to teach you how to elevate your career. So, okay, 
So you're frustrated that your boss isn't covering you to be here or professional development in general? In general. So are they covering other people's? No. Okay, so maybe that just might be their their thing. Right. What's keeping you there? Um, not a ton. Okay. <laughs> Let's come up with an exit strategy. <laughs> okay. Right? I mean, at the end of the day, if they're not meeting your expectations of what you want, what is keeping you there? I want to know, like, what's holding you back from GTFO? <laughs> Uh, nothing, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I don't want this to be like, you go home. Actually, this has happened to me a few times when I've talked <laughs> to clients. And literally the next day they quit their job and I'm like, oh shit, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I mean, I don't want you to bounce, right? We have to have an exit strategy. So come up with a, 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 a day in your book. Develop a strategy to get out. If, you're not, if, if they don't invest in you, if they don't find your value, friends, why are we there? The economy is rapidly changing, and just because you have a license or just because you are a professional, you are not isolated from the competition. We must develop a strategy to level up our career. Three, beat your imposter's edge up. <laughs> if you do not believe in yourself, why should anyone else? If we're not familiar with imposter syndrome is, it's that feeling. It's just a feeling that you don't belong here. You can't sit with us. It's just a feeling. It's probably actually not a fact. You are holding yourself back by lacking that feeling that you belong here. I give you full permission to be yourself. I give you full permission to be intentional with your time saying yes to the things that you want to say yes to that strategically aligns with your vision of success and no to everything else. And that actually takes you beating the imposter syndrome to build confidence. So these are all building on each other. When you have the confidence to be yourself, the odds of you becoming stand out in a busy competitive marketplace is there. Reconstruction shouldn't just be about putting back things the way they were before. It should be something different. And it shouldn't be taping up things back up. <laughs> Don't use tape, please. <laughs> so to start off, I decided to look up the definition of, of reconstruction. It's to build or form something again after it has been damaged or destroyed reorganize something, form an impression, model, or reenactment of a past event from available evidence. And the thing is that I felt like the word reconstruction still needs a little bit more. So I decided to define what reconstruction is. It's to build or form something again using first the available evidence, the experience, and the challenges that come from an event as the foundation for the application of new technologies, in this case, in, in architecture. As a growth and reconstruction strategy, we should promote local medical centers. This specific picture is of Hospital Tricoche in Ponce. It's a hospital that, that has been abandoned for some time, but it's in the main urban core of a city. So imagine if that hospital had been up and running during the hurricane, how many people they could have reached out to. We also had loss of access to fuel. I mean, the lines were just killer. You had to be there like for a few days. We adapted by consuming less fuel. And this picture I took is, I think it's one of my favorites. This guy is out to probably visit his girlfriend or, or take some gifts to her. And that was on September 30th. The hurricane was on the 20th, so there's no excuse for not visiting your girlfriend. <laughs> And as our growth and reconstruction strategy, you should promote densification, not urban sprawl, not suburbs, but bring, bring people closer together. Because communities were the first line of defense during the hurricane. The thing is, we are part of Generación Yo No Me Dejo. 
which is the generation that decided to stand up for what they believe in. What happened in Puerto Rico is uh, certain things that were happening in the, in the government and the way that things were being handled. Your generation wasn't okay with the way things were happening. So you're the generation that got to kick out the governor of Puerto Rico, you kicked him out through social media posts. Sí. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have zero tolerance for, for bullshit. <laughs> um, and you're a very powerful generation. You can change the face of architecture. I mean, you are very important and thank you all for being here today. There are conferences out there that don't necessarily focus on, on young people in architecture or young people in general. And it's such an important thing to be able to pass on mentorship and yeah. to pass on your knowledge and skills to a younger generation. The talk from Dr. Ashley, like she's very helpful with all the personal branding, self-development, and how to value yourself, actually. So I think everybody needs um, to realize our value to our community, to our workplace, and basically in, in our jobs or the things that we do. So far, I love it. This venue is awesome. The vibe, everyone has just been super positive. It's really relaxed. Uh, I love that. I love that it doesn't feel like you have to be someone who you are not. Uh, everyone is just themselves. We get to like get out of our comfort zone and meet new people and speak and listen to the stories of everyone and yeah we're very pumped. I kept looking for the expert online making YouTube videos about architecture and I couldn't find him. I think part of the reason why is because architecture is kind of an old profession. Um, I, one of my best friends back in Atlanta is a web page designer and what's funny is, is that there's no seasoned master in the web page design industry. The bosses there are all 35 and 40. The old guys, he said that they're only kept around as like legacy because they have some bit of the website that's written in some code that no one else knows anymore. Whereas in architecture, it's like my bosses have always been like 70 years old. And that doesn't happen in, in the tech industry. So those same, those same people who are like at the top of the food chain are not gonna be playing around on YouTube in 2010 or 2013 or 14 when I started. I was wondering, could, like, could there even be a channel about architecture? Because as a second or third year student, you know, I had very limited understanding of what the whole profession was actually about. I, yeah, I went to classes and all that, but I wasn't sure how deep it actually went. Did it really just turn into a regular career after you graduated? Is it really as deep as what Al, like Alberti and Michelangelo would write about? But um, it was between my third year and fourth year when I went to Charleston, South Carolina for the summer. And I actually got the great opportunity to shadow at a firm called the Olios Architects. And this is a firm that does great work in Charleston, it's the city where I was born in. And uh, I spent two days hanging out at the firm. And one of those days I got to talk to Dinos Leolio, who is the principal. And we got to just sit down in his office and talk for like two hours about architecture. And I got the, I got the mentorship type of advice that I was looking for. And it was in that moment where I realized that like, this could totally happen. You could definitely do a YouTube, video, a YouTube channel or some type of blog or some type of content online around architecture. And like the only question was, like for me after that was, would I be cut out to do that? So my message to you as young architects, as the future of this profession, is that as we go forward, do not wait to be picked. Pick yourself. Be the change you want to see in the world. And on that journey, make sure that you seek truth, order, and to help each other. Thank you for your time. Uh, we're doing a mock bid workshop where the bid meets the drawings. So everybody behind me is uh, working on putting together their bids for our project today to see how good they are at being general contractors. <laughs> We have two minutes.
This conference is definitely more driven for the profession. The other conferences that I've seen or heard about are more, uh, let's just get together, have, you know, drink a bunch, and have a bunch of parties, try, try to have people sell stuff to you. And this is absolutely not that conference. We met people yesterday that have never met before, but because we're here at the conference, there's already like a common bond between everybody. So it's been really exciting to see everyone come together. You know, everyone has the same mission to get their license. And people that aren't a part of some of the other stuff that's going on have a chance to really meet people that are in it and, and get a lot of value from them and get tips and how to take things to the next level. Yeah, you got a little foul language, you know, which you can't do normally. You got a little personality mm -hmm. in a conference. You got a little badassness. So it's, it's really refreshing. What Michael has done here has created something that brings the level of conversation down to maybe more of a level for younger professionals. Uh, at, at some of the other conferences I've been to, it's it's all about these flashy people who have done great things, but maybe aren't as relatable to someone my age. And so it's great to see some younger energy up there on the stage with people who are making monumental changes, not just here in the United States, but around the world. And then being able to see that, see how they did it, and then inspire me to want to do the same, and not just grow into the monotony of our profession. All right, let's go. That's right. I'm camera shy. You're camera yeah. shy? Yeah. Can, um, do you like the conference though? Yeah, the conference is the conference awesome. Conference is going good? Yeah, it's awesome. I feel wonderful. like it's a different vibe than the conferences I've followed Mike around at before. Yeah, I mean it definitely is a different group of people coming together and giving you the, not only inspiration but the confidence to accomplish what you your personal goals are and what your personal vision is. So yeah, it's definitely yeah, it. a place to come. You should come next year if you didn't make it this year. That's what the conference is about anyway. Okay. Not in age, but uh, in so you youth and in drive. Okay. And I go to at least a conference a month, and it's this is you know encouraging to get out and see the city, see the fabric, and see what we're all driving towards. Oh man, I'm just stoked to be here. Having a good time. This yeah. fucking dude killed it today. Yo, I couldn't have done it without you. The setup. This guy's the real MVP, man. Yo, yeah. I'm so happy to be here. Like, I'm so glad that this stuff happened, this stuff's going on. Awesome conference, dude. Awesome. Conference. Are you going to come next year? Of course. <laughs> Wherever it's at. I love it.